I like cars that not many other people have. Cars that are much rarer that you don't see so often. And as I've proven with my 156 GTA Sport Wagon, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get something rare and cool. So today we're gonna look at five cheap, unique hot hatchbacks that you can buy for under 5,000 pounds. Do hit like if you wanna see more videos like this. Subscribe as well if you're one of the 72% of people who aren't subscribed watching this right now. Let's get straight into it. <laughs> small, nimble, and built to provide maximum fun on a twisty road. That is the original formula of the hot hatchback. Today, with the A45 AMG, RS3, Golf R, and the likes, that formula has seemingly been scrapped, and while those cars are performant in their own rights, having driven them, they don't give you that pure hot hatch experience. That's where the little Suzuki Ignis Sport comes in as the least powerful, slightly older, and cheapest car on this list, but arguably the most fun. These come with a 1.5 litre inline four engine with variable valve timing, which makes 107 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 8.9 seconds, not quick at all, but owners and reviewers largely agree this doesn't take away from the fun you'll have in one of these. This competes with the Fiat Panda 100 HP and the Toyota Yaris T-Sport, some similarly cool rare hot hatches. The Yaris is probably the better car and the 100 HP is definitely as cool if a bit stiff on the suspension, but I think the Sport's rally style aesthetics and time capsule style interior with those Recaro race seats and yellow mesh in the headrest is a different level of cool factor. It weighs just 945 kilograms, so lighter than the other two, and there are fewer than 500 of them left in the UK, so it's much rarer as well. Add on the fact that these were effectively homologation specials, given they were built to enable Suzuki's entry into the Junior World Rally Championship, and you're quickly making a strong case for why these are so cool for such a little amount of money. Two grand will get you into one of these, and you'll still be getting a high mileage example for our 5k limit from around 2004. The main problems you'll find with these will be age related rather than specific common problems and owners talk about them being pretty reliable given they're not the most powerful or performant cars out there. They are cheap and cheerful on the interior and suspensions will probably need a few replacement parts if they haven't been looked at in a while. Next up we have a car that has gained a fair bit of respect with the best examples fetching some pretty decent prices, the VW Lupo GTI. In a time where the Golf GTI was a bit of a letdown and the Polo GTI didn't exist, the Lupo GTI was a breath of fresh air that offered a more pure hot hatch formula with the badge that is renowned for its impact on hot hatches more broadly, GTI. Its smaller size is almost oxymoronic to its wider wheel arches and slightly more aggressive looks overall. It definitely laid the path for the more recent up GTI which has similarly gained a good cult following. It also comes from an era of the Super 1600, hence it gets a 1.6 litre inline 4 block making 123 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 8 seconds, again not super quick, but enough for a car that weighs just 975 kilograms. Many cars have been named the spiritual successors to the Mark 1 Golf GTI, this was probably the first car to really get that title from motoring journalists. It was a real push against the tide of manufacturers making larger, heavier performance cars, and I think it's pretty close to reaching modern classic status for its troubles. It got uprated springs and dampers which lowered it slightly, disc brakes on all four corners, and a 5-speed gearbox pre-refresh or a 6-speed in the post-2001 refresh. I'd recommend looking for a 6-speed as it's a lovely close ratio gearbox that really adds to the car's agile characteristics. To get into one, you need to spend around 4k at the bottom end, so for our 5k limit, we'll be looking at a high mileage 2001 model. They're known to be pretty reliable, though burning too much oil is known to be an issue, and the most aggressive problems resulting from that have included bore scoring and blown valve stem seals. Gearboxes are largely good too outside of synchros on the 5 speed, and body panels can be quite expensive to replace if you go for the original aluminium parts. Onto the top three now, and in third, we have a hot hatch that I've been a fan of for quite some time now, mostly because I think it looks so good for the money, the Abarth Punto Evo. Those looks can be attributed to the legendary designer Giorgetto Giugiaro, the same man responsible for some of the world's most beautiful cars like the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta, Lancia Delta, and beyond. Many of his designs sit into the best looking cars category, which is why the Abarth Punto Evo looks so good. It also comes with a 1.4 litre turbocharged inline four engine, which makes 162 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.6 seconds, so still not crazy 
easy quick but for a sub 5k hot hatch that's this modern that's not bad there's no wonder these were canned by abarth relatively quickly the preface version of this the abarth grande punto sold just 247 examples in the uk in 2009 compared to the 500 abarth that sold over a thousand and the cooper s which sold 4303 so this face was an attempt to invigorate sales but sadly it didn't do enough and only lasted a few years before being cancelled completely often this is a sign of a rubbish car but in this case i think it's just an overlooked one as a car it actually handles more like a small grand tour than a proper hot hatch but that's no bad thing for day-to-day -day driving it might be the joint most sensible car to buy on this list just don't expect it to be as quick or as leery as a clio 200 for example these will run you around 4500 pounds at the bottom end and for 5k you'll get yourself a 2014 model with around 90,000 miles on the clock not bad for such a rare car broadly despite a checkered reliability record for fiat these have been very reliable it's the electricals that will let you down on them according to owners and some build quality failures on the interior but that's not the end of the world so i hope you guys are enjoying this video if you are then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new and i want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below have we already seen the best of the hot hatch days next up we have a car that shares much of its dna with that abarth the alfa romeo mito quadrifoglio this might be the coolest best value for money city hot hatch money can buy right now at least within our 5k price limit it gets treated pretty similarly to some other quadrifoglio models despite being the cheapest available with alpha's dna switch for different driving modes and some serious spec options including the lovely carbon back bucket seat which i've seen selling on ebay for 2k on their own they come with the same 1.4 liter turbocharged inline four engine as the abarth putting out 167 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 7.3 seconds so slightly quicker though i would say even as an alpha fan i think the abarth is probably prettier these are still good looking though both outside and in though as it's the cheapest quad it does cut a few corners on the finish which you might expect the faux carbon dashboard is a particular bugbear of mine though you will also find the same thing inside an a45 amg which is significantly more expensive or my 400 pound vw polo outside of that though it's beautifully classic alpha with the dashboard pods the horseshoe alloys and the round tail lights plus the telltale cloverleaf badging on the front wings for me this would be the ideal city runaround for an alfisti who has something like a 4c or maybe a classic alpha which they use as a weekend car but needs something to bash around in every day i've also proven in the past you can get pretty cheap insurance on them even as a young driver so it'd make a great first car for a budding alpha fan they'll run you around 3k at the bottom end and 5k will get you a 2012 model with around 60,000 miles on the clock pretty good value for a city car reliability on these is similar to that of the abarth of course with solid engines and limited rust like the older alphas that were terrible for it my 156 gta included again it's the electrics like failing speakers and the likes and build quality around chrome trims fading and that kind of stuff Taking the top spot on this list is by far the fastest car we're talking about today and one that I think remains pretty underrated, in part maybe because it's not as aggressive looking or well known as some of the other cars I've spoken about, it's the Mazda 3 MPS. It's so strange that Mazda came up with this hot hatchback and outside of the facelifted version of it, they haven't really done any specific hot hatches since. Now there's the Mazda 3 Turbo which is a bit of an anti-hot hatch, given it's mostly focused on being your everyday hatchback with a bit more power and performance, but a specific badged hot hatch doesn't really exist from Mazda anymore. But that's okay as these come with a cool 2.3 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine that makes 256 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 5.9 seconds, pretty quick for its time as it's over a second faster than the equivalent Golf GTI for example. If you're one of my US viewers you might know it as the Mazda Speed 3 or if you're in Japan it will be the Mazda Speed Accela but wherever you're from it came pretty well equipped with the LSD that helps it to actually use all that power through the front wheels. They also had ECUs tuned specifically to limit boost based on what gear you're in and the steering angle you're putting in as well which is why often you probably don't want to go for one that's been mapped as it might lose this and lose a lot of the drivability early doors they didn't actually get very good reviews due to overly stiff suspensions but not great handling but there's no denying the power advantages that they had over their competitors and the lower prices too these are listed anywhere from around three and a half thousand pounds now and 5k will get you into a 2008 example with around a hundred thousand miles on the clock lower engine mounts were known to cause problems and they had pc V issues too which were probably the most catastrophic to mention but broadly they're pretty strong the stock turbo is known to fail early and in rare cases there were timing chain issues sometimes caused by the vbt solenoid and so there you have it five unique hot hatches that you can buy for under five thousand pounds i hope you enjoyed do hit like and subscribe if you did huge thanks to the patrons that support you guys well for watching and click on screen to go see another video on some other cheap hot hatchbacks